You wanna be on YouTube? Are you gonna let me pet you? I don't wanna pet you because you pee on your own face. Hey, I didn't mean it like that. It's something that folks kind of look forward to. Basically, we're gonna look at everything that's in the building behind me. I'll give you updates on just about all the projects around here and uh, it'll be great. So as you can see, in terms of large projects and the like, really not all that much has changed around here. I did get this brand new toolbox. I don't think that's ever been seen on camera before. Just got that set up last night. Moved some stuff around, rearranged a few things. The Zetter project is still in here, of course. And I think Lucky's sniffing around for the shop toad over there. We, we have a shop toad. He sort of just comes and goes as he pleases. He usually hangs out in those pieces of square tube down there. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look at what's in the shop first and then uh, we'll talk about all the other projects out here. First off, the wood stove, obviously. Old firewood bin is looking slightly more melted than it was at this time last year. Comments I get from people said, I, you know, I never do anything with owner's manuals and really that's just not true. I actually save up the owner's manuals from everything I acquired throughout the year and that's what I use to get the wood stove cranking in the winter time. So that's working out pretty well. Still have the old grizzly mill. I've had this for like more than two years now. Absolutely love it. Never once a single problem. As you can see, haven't used it in a couple weeks. A little bit dusty. But when I need it, it always works great. I've been meaning to make a actual proper review for you guys about this. So I have this old material stand built that I think back when I was in high school, way back in the day. I uh, got the old claws in Colchester lathe. Yeah, so this is the other thing. Shop's a little bit dirty right now. This is uh, on the dirtier side than average. We got some rain in the tractor, tracked in a bunch of stuff, and I, I haven't swept up in here in like, I don't know, at least a week or so. So it's a little bit dirty, but I, I want to show you guys this in its normal, you know, in its normal sense. So we got the old claws in Colchester lathe. Bought this in the summer 2015. Absolutely love it. Really need to clean it, serves me well. And it's like I always say, and you guys, you guys have sort of made this into a meme. You don't need a lathe every day, but when you need a lathe, you need a lathe. So as you can see, we got that. We got this big sheet of aluminum back here that we can do something or other with at some point. Still got the old VFD thing. I don't know, Very yeah, variable frequency drive. There we go, that's what produces three phase power for this lathe. Love that, as you can see, I don't have the old Powermatic drill press anymore. Uh, that's actually what I traded to a guy for that Ford 820 tractor because uh, the old Powermatic wasn't running all that well. It, it needs either some serious adjustment or some repairs and I never used it because I know I'll get flamed for this but quite frankly I prefer using the Grizzly mill slash drill press over the Powermatic anyway so I was sort of happy to see that go the guy was happy to have it and I was happy to get another tractor project so yeah one of the big main acquisitions around here was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of drill bits and taps and all sorts of stuff this is from my buddy Martin uh, he's got a channel here on YouTube some of you guys remember this he basically sold out all of his machine shop stuff and, um, and I bought, well, all of this stuff and a lot of other stuff as well. So let's see, we got that. We got some specialty welding wire. We got my stainless steel scrap. Yeah, looking a little dingy copper scrap. Old generator and uh, pool motor from Steve. Both of those are waiting to go to the scrap yard. And then brass scrap and that little thing over there. Uh, extra drill press vise. Base for the big thingamajigger on the mill, uh, iron worker tooling. You know it's legit when it comes in a coffee can, some emery cloth. Yeah, like I said, I gotta go through and clean this stuff up. Up here we got the Viking drill bits. Everybody asks me what my favorite drill bits are, and uh, these Viking Norseman ones, I really like them. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but they're made here in the US. They cut like a dream, they last really well. Got some random stuff, got an extra chuck for the lathe in there, pens, pencils. This is my machining toolbox. Oh, talking a lot even by my standards here, trying to keep up. This is my machining toolbox, so this is where like a lot of uh, just all sorts of random stuff goes. You can see we got this whole big drawer full of end mills and the like. Uh, that's probably got my contact information in there, so we're not going to open up that drawer. Got all sorts of chuck keys in here, uh, lathe stock. This is mega disorganized, uh, countersinks and reamers and then a whole bunch of the more commonly used larger drill bits around here. Moving on, we got some random small tools that are often helpful when running a lathe. This is my drawer full of taps and everything. This is just a basic set. It's not that great of a set, but I've had it for years. Got some random stuff I picked up, came with some other stuff, and then we've got a bunch of smaller pipe taps and larger pipe taps that came out of Martin's, uh, Martin's bunch of stuff, basically. People got people texting me. Fine measuring stuff. 
a uh, larger, slightly less fine measuring stuff. Got the Temple E-Stick, got the large Mitutoyu uh, veneer calipers in here. Uh, just a normal combination square. And in here we've got some more random tooling. These are a bunch of annular cutters for the mag drill. Got the pine tree drills. These are useful for sheet metal work, of course. More annular cutters. And a large menagerie of hole saws. Uh, I think pretty much all this stuff is here. This is a thread repair kit. This is, well, that stuff is there. This is new. These are basically like specialty files and everything you use to repair threads. I've never actually used this, but it came with uh, all that stuff I got from Martin. You guys are going to hear that a lot going around the machining stuff. I uh, got a steady rest for the lathe and a follower as well. These are the good tap sets. They're actually from Harbor Freight. These are some of the best things that Harbor Freight sells, in my opinion. A uh, buddy of mine has a large commercial repair business. They're pretty much all he uses. I've owned these things for a while. Pretty much all I use. They just plain and simple work really well. And in here we've got an extra chuck. I believe that's a six jaw chuck and all sorts of random extras too. So I still have this grinder. This is actually one of my better stories. I bought this thing for, for five bucks from an old farmer back in Ohio. This thing was sitting out in this field. It had been for years, if not decades, and he told me, boy, I don't know if that thing works or not, but you can have it for five bucks whether it works or whether it doesn't. And as you can see, even after that, in years of me using it, fires right up, runs smooth as a dream. Even the switch works. I think that's the original switch. So that's one of my better finds. Uh, over here we've got all sorts of large wrenches. You guys know I do a lot with uh, tractors and farm equipment. So having wrenches up to two inches and I believe 50 millimeters down there. You know, you don't need them every day, but when you need them, you need them. Got some uh, older craftsmen here. I bought a pair of the absolutely ginormous, for lack of a better term, Nipex. I think that's how you pronounce that out of Germany. Um, basically like the mother of all channel locks and I got the uh, their XL pliers wrench as well. I just bought that. I don't think I've actually used either of them on a project yet. Uh, a few random pipe wrenches because it's always useful for bending stuff around. Uh, let's see up here we just have, yeah there's not my address on any of this stuff, just some random stuff. We got extra glasses and face shields, uh, just stuff we don't use every day, stuff that's basically long-term storage. And if you'll excuse me I have to shoot this goat out of here before he starts pooping all over my floor again. Scram! Also got some random battery chargers up here. Got the uh, one for the Walter grinder and two extra Milwaukee batteries. Normally just get away with having one battery on one charger, but uh, you know, anytime we're doing something really intense, like a lot of grinding with the cordless grinders or running the rotary hammer, it's nice to have these to switch them out. Still use these. Self-threading sheet metal screws, can't be without those, tungsten sharpener. Uh, got all sorts of random stuff. I'm investing in a few more mechanics tools than I previously have, so I bought a slide hammer set and a bearing splitter as well. Now I got some specialty wiring here, and this is kind of interesting. My buddy mechanic Steve owns a house that I think he's actually sold it by now, but I uh, helped him get some stuff ready to move out there. He had this little dolly thing he wanted me to just tack weld underneath uh, one of his projects. And, you know, he's like, oh, what do I owe you? I was like, oh, don't worry about it. You help me with plenty of random stuff. And at this point, he's like, hey, yeah, you know, just feel free to rummage around in my garage because, uh, you know, I've already gotten out everything I want to take with me and pretty much everything else. You know, if you want it, great. You can have it. Otherwise, we're leaving it. So I got all sorts of random stuff because Mechanic Steve is, I, I don't want to give away personal information, but I'm pretty sure he said in his own videos, he used to work in the oil field. Those guys... Uh, specify a lot of very expensive, very obscure stuff, and usually, since they've got money to burn, they don't really want the uh, leftovers, so working as a mechanic for them, he ended up with all sorts of stuff. We've got this, uh, this stuff, this is probably about 16 gauge wire roughly in a stainless steel sheath here. I don't know what I'll use that for, but I kind of want to save it because I'm sure that was pretty expensive. Got all sorts of random wire, got some of this stuff, which is uh, basically trailer wire. You used to run trailer lights or whatever. It comes all nicely bundled together. Metal removal machine, still use it, still love it. Still never a single problem with this thing. Uh, a little redneck, slightly terrifying, but you know what? It friggin' works. Uh, got all sorts of, well, automotive chemicals in there, a few small organizers. I built this thing this year. This is, let me put my safety squints down here. This is pretty much what it looks like. It is just a uh, wire wheel machine. It's useful for taking rust and, you know, light coatings of paint and everything else off of stuff. This motor, I kind of got the same way. I got that, uh, that little grinder over there. Went to a yard sale, guy was like, uh, you know, I saw this old electric motor sitting there and I asked the guy about it, he's like, man, that thing worked 
30 years ago, the last time I plugged it in, I bet it still does, but I don't really know. And that one, I, that one I think I paid a whole 10 bucks for. And again, it was mine whether it worked or whether it didn't, as you can see. Works just fine, probably can't see it in there. Uh, yeah, got that, got the old dry rod oven. <laughs> Keep this nice and well stocked. Finally broke down and bought a hose clamp assortment so I don't have to run to the auto parts store every 10 minutes, so it feels like when I'm working on stuff. Picked up an extra MiG 2400. Uh, just have some random stuff down in there. Got another op trail that I gotta make a video about. Um, smaller HDP stick welder. Down in there, these are all the electric motors and the like from Martin Shop. Got some random towing stuff and whatnot there. Uh, painting stuff, spare Milwaukee batteries. Yeah, so one of the other organizational things that I've learned to do is to find toolboxes and, and make kits of everything. Like as opposed to putting stuff in drawers on roll around carts or whatever, so it's all together. This is my cable crimping kit, obviously. So this has like stainless steel cable, it's got the crimper in it, uh, you know, like 500 feet of cable, all sorts of stuff. Same with this, all the soldering stuff just in there. So it's great because stuff stays together. You don't have to make infinite trips to your toolbox and back because you know, you just you take this out, you set it on the workbench, you have everything you could possibly need. Proper nuts and bolts organizer this year as well. That's a big step forward. You don't realize how much time you spend digging around trying to find stuff when you need it until you're actually properly set up. So pick that up, highly recommend the investment. My meme wrenches. <laughs> These things were all the rage a few years or so ago because they work on like eight or ten different types of fasteners. You know, it's the kind of thing that it works on all these, but on none of them really perfectly. However, sometimes they are quite useful. Plus, I got a couple of those in here as well. Now, these pliers. This organizer is one of the best things I think I've bought in quite a while. Actually, as you can see, there's two organizers in here. They, these don't really make it so you can fit more pliers into the drawer, but it's awesome because if I know I need like my, you know, like my Nipex mini bolt cutters or something, open this, here they are. It is great. I don't have to dig around in a drawer and, and you know, try to fish these things out. It's really nice. It's really efficient. And um, yeah, highly, highly recommend those vertical organizers. So. Moving on from there, I've got my personal favorite drawer of air tools. You guys know I love air tools because they last forever. They're really cheap, no electronics, really simple. And um, yeah, so got all sorts of random stuff in here. Most of these I picked up this year. I, I've had some a little bit longer than that. But uh, yeah, I, I finally invested in a good set of these and every time I use them, I'm thankful that I not only have them but have decent ones. Uh, as well, so I really really like all those moving along. We got screwdrivers got some organizers These don't work as perfectly as the pliers organizer because every time you close the drawer to the toolbox They shift forward, but it's a lot better than nothing. So I got that larger adjustable wrenches uh, I've got a smaller one of these little Nipex pliers wrenches in here as well lucky Please leave me alone. I'm trying to make a YouTube video. Good boy uh, <laughs> Got all those uh, and here we've got all sorts of hex stuff, don't we, buddy? Yeah, uh, we do. We got all sorts of hex keys. I got these Elklind, Elklind, whatever, however you pronounce that. These I've had for several years, and they just plain and simple work great. I've put a lot of torque on them. I don't think I've ever broken a single one, uh, American made. So normally, pretty much all I use out of this drawer is these things or these things. But I also have an obnoxious puppy here, and uh, <laughs> and some of these hex. Um, some of these hex sockets as well. This poor dog, he just wants to run around outside and bark at the neighbor dog constantly, but I got tired of listening to that and uh, corralled him here in the building and he's really, really not happy about that. So, all right, so we got that. We got ball drivers. These are like screwdrivers, but with a hex tip on the end of them. They're really useful. Moving along, we got nut drivers. Uh, these are just some cheap ones. I think they're like uh, Husky from Home Depot or whatever. Yeah, but they've actually held up really well. Use those. The Klein ones are nice, but they're only a little bit nicer and they cost like two or three times as much as these. Uh, this, this is my snap-on half inch, half inch torque wrench. Here we have more meme wrenches. This is also just like the wrenches up there. These are the things that are made to work on like six or eight different kinds of sockets. Uh, I don't use them very often, but occasionally you get something really weird and they're just plain nice to have uh, in those cases. Got some larger adjustable wrenches. These are sort of crapping up this entire drawer, so they probably won't stay there for forever, but they're there for right now. Air tool supplies, got like carbide burrs, extra set of needles for the needle scaler. Uh, just all the stuff that really goes with everything in this drawer, but I don't want it in there because then they'll sort of crap up the drawer and make it so it's really hard to find stuff. Uh, this is all my electrical tools. Got these automatic wire strippers, really like these. I think I picked them up within the last year or so. Uh, multimeter, just, uh, you know, crimp connections. 
Torque stuff pretty much more of the same as the Hex, but obviously Torx got a snap ring pliers. I haven't even put anything in these two yet. I bet that's not gonna last too long. <laughs> and here in the cabinet, got the safety wire tool kit, plus the giant one inch drive impact wrench with metric and SAE sockets for it as well. Smaller half inch drive impact, and uh, some more random stuff which I don't use all that often. Some of the stuff I've actually not used at all yet because I haven't had time to spend as much time as I'd like on those projects. Down here, just some more random obscure tools which I don't use uh, every single day. So, yeah. Um, yeah, fun stuff, right? I'm not a mechanic, but I do the occasional mechanical projects and I'm, like I said, really, really, really happy to have an actual properly sized uh, work uh, toolbox for this. So moving on, a lot of people asked what happened to the dump truck and the answer is that I sold it because it needed a transmission. I was going to take that out and have it rebuilt myself. You can actually see there's a transmission jack down there that I bought just for the, uh, the job. However, somebody offered me a lot more money than I had in it. So it's like, all right, you know what? For, for this price, I'm not really gonna mess with it too much. You don't need a press every day, but when you need a press, you need a press. And uh, yeah, it works great. Never a single problem out of that, which isn't something I can say about everything that I bought. Uh, but yeah, moving along, this is just some random storage. We got like an extra pump thing. I need to put that one on the mill. Uh, you know, big grinding wheels, duct tape, need lots of that. Plasma consumables. I see some extension cords over there, all sorts of Loctite. Uh, pretty much more of the same. I got like bins full of pulleys and sprockets and, and roller chain stuff and all that. Got some spare wheels, been meaning to make a torch cart for like over a year, still haven't. <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh, I picked up a suitcase welder. This is also something which I still have yet to get around to actually trying out. So we got that, all sorts of paint markers and stuff and welding wire down in there. Now moving on, we've got most of a Zetter here. The rest is of course sitting outside. So the story behind this, people are asking for updates on this. And the reason why really not that much has been done is because mechanic Steve, some of you guys know this, he lives like six hours away from me. So it's really hard to find time logistically when we can actually get around to messing with it. Uh, but total engine rebuild, I don't know, it's like 30% done or so. He's got a few days off coming up that he'll uh, hopefully spend up here and we can get this thing back together. Uh, but yeah, I got all the parts for that just laying every friggin' where. Uh, over here, this is sort of a mess. This area is something I wouldn't mind cleaning up a little bit next year. Got a mini chop saw, some, uh, some of that oil drying kitty litter type stuff. Some spare oil, all sorts of wheels, sandblaster, which I still have to hook up to the big uh, gas-driven compressor outside. Got a couple large trailer jacks for some projects that'll hopefully be coming up at some point here. Uh, leaf springs for the same. Just more random storage. Uh, steel, drops of steel. Got some aluminum in here. Got a bunch of steel, which I pilfered, you know, with permission, of course, from some construction sites I was working on. Uh, extra air compressor, pressure washer. Man, uh, this was this was a big investment for me a couple years ago. I think that one was like eight or nine hundred dollars or so. You know, I wanted to get a good one, and it is awesome. Every single time I have to weld on something that was really, you know, just plain and simple, nasty, coated in grease, coated in dirt grease and dirt and like everything else you can think of, it makes it a breeze to work on. So every time I, I use that thing, I'm really glad I bought it. Got the old uh, 14 inch chop saw, which refuses to die. 812 band saw and a roller table. You can see, I haven't used this in a while on account of there being a tractor in the way of where the uh, <laughs> roller table used to go. So yeah, I got all sorts of random stuff over in here. Also, we got acetone, a bug zapper, and oh, what's this? The Omelette Master 220 from Harbor Freight. So what else do we have? Iron Worker, that's one of the big additions this year. I love that thing, don't need it that often, but like nine out of 10 other things in here, man. When you need an Iron Worker, it is just the tool for the job, and there's no two ways around it. Still got the uh, 221, use that all the time. Uh, same with the first 2400, I got two of these things now because they just don't die and they work really well. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's about everything in here. Put in an actual proper security system this year. Make it a point to unplug that when we're filming in here for obvious reasons. Got more tractor parts there. A uh, bunch of shipping material and everything from the toolbox which has to go out. Oh yeah, this is one of my latest great ideas. I finally got tired of just perpetually having damaged ratchet straps because they don't last long around steel machinery and everything.
everything. So I bought some proper towing chains. I had like three of these random load binders, got some other ones as well. And I put one chain and one, sorry buddy, and one binder uh, in each of these buckets. And it's great because, you know, you just grab these things and carry them out. It's not too much weight for the bucket. You have everything all ready to go. Chains don't get tangled in with other chains and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And of course we got a couple of large chain falls here because, um, well, you know, those are really useful for any time you have to pull on or bend on or anything that requires that type of force on steel. Be gone, goats. Out here we got the rest of the parts for the zeter or uh, how do you say it? So th that's the other thing. Evidently the way you pronounce their brand name, like in German or whatever, because they're a Czech company. In German it's Zetoa, if I remember right, something along those lines. Which is good. I try to use that because, man, I like the English language and all, but just the word Zeter is kind of a linguistical train wreck if you ask me. So we got all sorts of parts for this. The front end sheet metal still sitting there. I uh, got the welding rig. Actually just used this thing yesterday. Still sits here. Um, yeah, I love this truck. The, this is the one with the 5.4 everyone told me it was going to explode and uh, you know it's going to be really bad and now it has just under 200,000 miles on it starts instantly runs like new uh, probably the single best investment I think I ever <laughs> I ever made my regular viewers know this story I um, you know I figured I, I got on Ford's like build a truck website whatever the technical term for that is and I figured that to configure one of these new as it sits here at least three years ago when I bought it I'm sure it's more now it was gonna cost me like 45 grand or so which is almost to the dollar ten times what I paid for this thing everything's mirror image and a viewfinder and uh, so I figured if you expect a work truck to last 10 years at least if you're running it hard you know this thing's a tenth as much so if I got one year out of it and gave it away I would have my dollars worth and that was like three and a half years ago and it's running better and working better than it ever has so I'm really happy about that I got the 7060 Kubota here really looking forward to next year's hay season this one was sort of a flop due to the Zetter exploding the first day that I ever used it and then uh, I really got railed by a uh, New Holland dealer and was tied up in a sort of a quasi legal battle if you will for months to get my money back for their services on that baler which I finally did which uh, was really ugly but you know what if they don't want to fix things properly or do what they said that they would or charge me to then it's gonna be a mess and now because grandpa was right about everything I learned in hindsight if you want something done right you have to do it yourself so when I have time we're gonna take that baler into the shop and uh, yeah I'm probably pointing somewhere over there I uh, can't really see the viewfinders too small and we're actually gonna take apart the whole nodder assembly got a specialty nodder manual just do everything that well they got paid to do twice basically so got that going on got the backhoe I was just at a trade show everybody asks about the backhoe how it's going it's going great got it rewired got all new hoses pretty much all the way around the problem however is that uh, one of the at least one of the hoses just split like in two inside this boom where the cylinder is it doesn't have an exposed cylinder like some machines do so this is this is gonna suck what I'm gonna do is get around to removing all these all, you know gobbledygooked on patches here and run like some large probably two two inch by like three eighths at a minimum angle iron down both sides of this thing and I'm gonna weld that on before I change out the hoses because the heat from that's probably gonna roast what's left of these old crappy hoses Actually, that one looks pretty good, but some of them not so much. And then once that's all welded in place, then we'll uh, reach in there and, and change those out. Then it should basically be done. I really, really like this project because I'll have, hopefully, if the transmission works and we don't, you know, mess anything up or discover any problems, a fully functional TLB for like, I don't know, probably have four grand in this thing including all the hoses and, and everything and I definitely get my dollars worth out of this thing hauling scrap metal with it so we got that got the press uh, or the the brake rather still use that still works great I uh, got this thing to hold some firewood random four by eight sheet a quarter inch plate which is left over from a project and still sitting outside still got that tire that I still have to mount got this thing um, yeah the crappiness of the wood pallet is just too crappy so I'll probably have to build a proper steel frame for this thing because it's all falling apart so yeah we got that over here of course we got the drum mower and then we got the baler and the goat and uh, the thing about this baler is like I said I'm gonna go through I'm gonna get this fixed up do everything myself do everything in-house unless of course I can get Steve to help me with it that would be uh, even better 
Uh, but yeah, major, major fluster cluck with this thing. Ended up costing me tens of thousands of dollars in, in lost productivity, but you know what? When you entrust a dealer to do what they say that they're supposed to or have done, you know, there's just, and you know, hindsight being 2020, there's probably something rather I could have done, but it, you know what it is what it is so not only am i going to fix this thing i'm going to buy a second baler and i really want parts commonality because what i learned about these things is that despite new holland's best efforts even though the design specifically of like the knotters and everything on the back is probably 100 150 years old they're still not all that reliable they're they're extremely finicky there's a lot that can go wrong right mr goat and uh, so, you know, I really, I want to have a second machine out of the same generation. So with two machines, I should be able to survive three catastrophic failures and keep running. Um, you know, because, you know, first one breaks, you use the second one, second one breaks, parts from that, and then that le lasts you until your third issue. Uh, but yeah, you know what? Better luck next year, right? Still got the 5x10 I-beam trailer, of course. Probably never parting with that ever. Uh, don't use it all that often, but when I do, tool for the job. You know, 5x10 flatbed trailer with a 7,000 pound axle. Really useful when you need it. 20 foot steel hauling trailer. Still here, still hauling steel every time that I need to. Got a 10 foot rotary shredder back there, which I bought for virtually nothing because it needs a new deck, so we'll have to weld in one of those. Got three large trailer barbecues out here, trying to sell those. Unfortunately, time of year, not really the best for that. Got this thing. This has been here for like over a year or so now, and I still don't think I've really announced it to you guys. Basically, what I'm gonna end up doing with this is uh, making it into a hydraulically operated dump trailer, which runs, you know, hydraulically, of course off the rear remotes on one of the tractors so uh, it'll be really useful for moving firewood moving you know junk just all sorts of random stuff and it is as you guys have probably figured out the back two-thirds of a uh, I think it was a yeah it was an old f600 dump truck so it's still got all the hydraulics and everything down there uh, really nice and nasty and repulsive so yeah that should be that should be a fun one to do. Got the air compressor skid, works great, never a single problem. Got this plow over here, which I built some coulter wheels for. Uh, all the keyboard commandos said they would never work and had this problem and that one, and they work flawlessly. Again, never a single problem. I uh, got that, got the 820 Ford over here. I just got in the other day the replacement wheel hub for this side, then we can installify that wheel. And uh, then, of course, it's onto the rear wheels as well. We got to replace some of these studs, which people have managed to break off. I think this is the side missing, like, what, three or four of them or so. Yeah. So, yeah, coming along. And, of course, I got the big old Dooley Ford trailer out here, which is loaded to the gills with firewood for the shop. Yeah, really not sure we could fit too much more in there. <laughs> New Holland hay rake, still here. And one of the very few things which I purchased last year, uh, which I didn't actually get screwed on. So, you know, that was a nice surprise. And for that reason alone, I really like this old thing. Do you like it too, Mr. Goat? Yeah, that's what I thought. Here, you want some leaves? Fine, I like these leaves. So we got all that and also the compressor shed. This thing's been weather tested for like almost a year now, like at least nine or 10 months in Texas rain and Texas wind. Air compressor still in here, still works great. And I have no regrets at all for everybody who followed that project and uh, was asking about evicting my air compressor because it never paid rent anyway. So that's the good news. Bad news is for some reason, the internet trolls really, really hated this project. Uh, just like even more whining and complaining than usual about it. But you know, I'm like, look guy, this is a, uh, this is a tool shed on the side of a mismatched color steel building made out of scrap metal to hold an air compressor. I don't know if folks are expecting Buckingham Palace or what, but that was never really my intention. And um, yeah, it, I mean, it works great. So pretty happy with that. So yeah, we still got pretty much everything uh, in here. Got a few new acquisitions. We talked about that. And um, thanks for watching everyone.